Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode 16 of the TV Yellow Les Paul Junior build. And in this episode, we're gonna be doing the bit that I understand some people don't enjoy, but I quite like, and that's all the finish prep. Okay, so in the last episode, we established that everything fits as it should. There are no problems there. So next up is to get everything off the guitar again and start the finish prep, which to be honest, on this guitar, isn't actually going to be that much. And the reason I say that is on this build, I don't actually have to do any grain filling at this point. I'm sure some of you will have seen this, but if you haven't, the older TV yellow guitars actually had that yellow coat sprayed onto them. Then the grain was filled over the top of that with a brown grain filler, which would then be kind of flushed off. And then the clear coats would be put on top of that. And it leaves, as you might be able to see from this image, a really, really nice looking finish. So that's what I intend to do with this. So it means that Realistically, all I've got to do is a whole heap of sanding and we're ready to get some paint onto it. I will need to grain fill the front of the headstock because that's going to be painted gloss black. But apart from that, I don't have to worry about it. But seeing as finish prep hopefully won't be a huge amount of work, I'm actually going to do a little bit of the initial fret work in this episode as well. If you remember, these frets were actually pressed in with a fret press rather than being hammered in and I'm hoping that what that's achieved is a very uniform application of the frets into the board. So I'm going to go over this fretboard and just establish how consistent they are and hopefully that means we won't have to do a huge amount of work on these when it comes time to set it up properly. But before I can do any of that I need to get rid of all this stuff that we put on last week so I'll strip this all off and I'll join you back when that's done. Okay, that's everything off. Didn't take that long at all. There isn't really that much. So the next up is I'm going to get my little random orbital sander on the job hooked up to a dust extractor. So this is going to be noisy and I'm just going to try and go over all the big areas of the guitar with this. I'm going to start off with a 120 pad, then I'm going to go to 150. I would then go to 240, but I noticed that I don't have any 240 pads. So I'm going to go to 320 grit and hopefully with that done, we should be kind of where we need to be with it. You don't want to go too fine because all you're going to be doing is like polishing the wood up a little bit. We don't really want that. That's the finish ain't going to stick to it properly. And with that done, pretty much that's the finished prep for this stage done. It really is going to be quite straightforward.
Okay, so that's the sanding pretty much done now. And I've got the first coat of Aquacoat onto the headstock and I'll leave that, probably leave that overnight just to dry up. It just needs a kind of a very quick sand over and we can give that another one or two coats. But while that's happening, we can turn our attention to the fretboard and get that where we need it. And I'm not gonna go overboard with these just yet. I just want to firstly make sure that the kind of frets are somewhere in the ballpark of where we need them just so I've got an understanding of how much work I'm going to have to do. And secondly, we squared these fret ends up to the edge of the fretboard and we do need to put just a little bit of a chamfer on them. So I'm going to use my new crimson fret leveling file to do that. I'm pretty sure that will be a nice little tool just to run along there and get that little chamfer put on. But before I do anything, I am going to get my notched straight edge out. And I'm just going to make sure that the neck is in a straight condition before we do anything. And I've just got an eight thou feeler gauge here and that is going under. So I think we need to do a little bit of work with the truss rod. And that seems to be pretty much straight. And with that done, it's just a case now of just going over this with the fret rocker, just to make sure that everything is how it needs to be. And immediately, that fret is a little bit high. I don't think it's a huge amount. Okay, so there are a few frets that are kind of slightly high in places, but it's, it's nothing major and it's way better than I've ever had at this stage before. So genuinely very happy with that. I don't think we're gonna to have to take a lot of material off these frets to get them exactly how we want them. I think at a push, if we really, really wanted to, we could just spot level some of these and we'd probably get it somewhere like, but if we're gonna do it, we might as well do it properly. But I'm really pleased because Traditionally, I've had to take quite a lot of material off the frets sometimes, which isn't ideal, but I think in this instance, it's gonna be just a very, very quick skim over and it'll be job done. So that's great. This worked an absolute treat for just putting those slight bevels onto the fret ends. So that's very good, happy with that as well. So now it's just a case of leaving it overnight, letting the headstock dry off. We sand that down tomorrow, get the next coat of grain filler on there. And we're going to be somewhere in the ballpark of getting this ready for spraying.
Okay, so that's the second coat of the grain filler on there. I'm probably going to leave this overnight again. That seems to have worked very well on the first coat. It does seem to be filling up really, really well. So that's all good news. However, there is one other little job that I need to get done that people keep reminding me of. And that's at the other end of the guitar and involves getting this stud out and drilling a hole through into the control cavity. Now I had a couple of questions about how I would get this stud out and it's very, very straightforward. Need a block of wood with an appropriate sized hole in, a washer, and this is an old stud. As you can see, it's, it's all chewed up and mangled, so it's no good for using on an actual build, but it's fine for this purpose. And it's just a matter of kind of tightening this up. And slowly but surely, draw that stud out of the body. Like that. Very easy. Doesn't cause any damage to the body. Doesn't cause any damage to the insert. And now all I need to do is find a long series drill bit and just drill through at an angle. And I'm just going to aim for that hole there where the pot comes through. And I know I'll be in then. And then I've just got a long series drill bit. It's about four mil there. And I'm just going to put the scraper down just so I don't mar the wood. So there we have our access for our ground wire. I'm just going to pull this other stud out while I'm at it. Don't really need the inserts in for painting, it's just something else to mask off. And as long as you're careful when you're putting them back in and don't clump your freshly painted body, everything should be absolutely fine. And again, these long series drill bits are a really, really good thing to have in your workshop. They're not that expensive. You don't use them that often, but when you need one, you definitely need one, so having them is a benefit. I got this whole kind of set. I think it's either off eBay or Amazon for about £2.50 and there's about 10 drills in there of various sizes but that extra length really really does come in handy from time to time so definitely worth having. And that's the prep virtually done. There's only one thing I want to do and that's to actually take the air gun and just give this a good blow over and blow any dust that might be trapped in the grain of the wood out so that those pores are nice and open so we do actually get the paint sinking into them. I know that's probably not something you'll hear me say very often, but on this occasion it is quite important that we do that. And you could probably see that changing colour as I was kind of blowing it out. It was getting rid of all of that dust in the, in the grain. So that is nice and open now. And the paint should sink into that beautifully. So that's it, ready for the paint now. But that's going to be for another episode. So I'll be back in a couple of days time with that. Until then, smash that like button if you've enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.